first we will start with bacterial cell wall so bacterial cell wall is the outer covering of the bacteria it provides shape to the bacteria okay if you remove the cell wall any bacteria will become spherical it is because of the bacterial cell wall the shape has been given to the bacteria some bacteria are spherical some bacteria are bacillus some bacteria are spirally coiled all these are due to the presence of rigid bacterial cell wall okay so it provides shape to the bacteria it provides rigidity to the bacteria also it also uh, provides various other functions like there are various virulence factors which are present in the cell wall for example the lipopolysaccharide or the peptidoglycan layer all these they act as virulence factor for the bacteria and many of the bacterial cell wall components are immunogenic that is when the organism infect the human body the human immune response can be stimulated against the bacterial cell wall antigens like the lipopolysaccharide antigen against that the uh, the human body can produce antibodies so uh, bacterial cell wall is immunogenic also okay so the most important uh, function of the bacterial cell is it protects the bacteria it protects the bacteria from osmotic lysis if you remove the cell wall then the bacteria may undergo osmotic lysis it is the it is a cell wall which provides a rigidity and it protects the bacteria it also protects the bacteria from various external environment okay so let us discuss now the structure of gram positive cell wall the gram positive cell wall has a peptidoglycan layer it has a peptidoglycan layer which is around 5200 layer thick and it also has tacoic acid the peptidoglycan layer is 50 to 100 layer thick and it is composed of chains of mucopeptide each layer is a mucopeptide layer and this layer is uh, composed of alternate molecule of nam and nag okay nam stands for n acetyl muramic acid and nag states for n acetyl glucosamine so these alternate uh, molecules are uh, present in the mycopeptide layer so like this it has around 50 to 100 layer thick okay so you can see here this is one uh, mycopeptide layer this is another uh, a mycopeptide layer each of the of the mycopeptide layers are composed of alternate uh, molecule of nag and nam and the mycopeptide layers are interlinked to each other they are interlinked to each other by a tetrapeptide side chain so the tetrapeptide side chain it it usually originates from the nam molecule and it is been composed of four amino acids so these are the four amino acids l lysine and d alanine these alternate uh, the uh, the adjacent uh, tetrapeptide side chains are further connected to each other by a pentaglycine bridge okay so i repeat here alternate chains of alternate layers of uh, mycopeptide are, are connected to each other by the side chains uh, the tetrapeptide side chains and both the tetrapeptide side chains are are further linked to each other by a pentaglycine bridge uh, that is how the 
peptidoglycan layer is been interlinked to each other and this gives a uh, rigidity to the cell wall. Apart from that the gram positive uh, cell wall also has another uh, element which is called as tachoic acid. It, the, it is of two type cell wall tachoic acid which is usually attached to the uh, peptidoglycan layer or lipotachoic acid which is usually attached to the cell membrane. So, these tachoic acids are present in the cell wall of gram positive organism and they are typically absent in gram negative. Okay. The function of the tachoic acid is unknown though they believe that it may help in addition but there is no clear cut idea about the function of the tachoic acid. Uh, let us discuss now about the gram negative cell wall. The gram negative cell wall is little different from the gram positive. The first difference is the peptidoglycan layer is very very thin, very thin it is 1 to 2 layer. Okay, it is usually present in the periplasmic space and it is usually thin and next to the peptidoglycan layer it has outer membrane. Outer membrane is not there in gram positive cell wall. It is a component of gram negative cell wall. External to the outer membrane another layer is there which is called as lipopolysaccharide. So, these are the two additional structures in gram negative cell wall and also they do not have tachoic acid and as I told you earlier the peptidoglycan layer is just one to two layer thick. So, the gram negative uh, peptidoglycan layer very few layers thick, uh, 1 to 2 layer thick. Again, it is composed of alternate uh, a molecule of uh, NAM and NAC, but here the difference is from each NAM molecule again the side chains they will emerge, but the difference is at the third position in case of gram positive at the third position it was lysine. Whereas, in case of gram negative at the third uh, position of the side chain, the amino acid is mesodiaminopimacetic acid. Okay. So, then the adjacent tetrapeptides here they are directly linked to each other, there is no pentaglycine bridge. This is another difference between gram positive and gram negative cell wall. In gram positive cell wall, the both the tetrapeptide side chains are connected to each other by a pentaglycine bridge. Okay? Whereas here the pentaglycine bridge is absent, both the side chains you can see here they are directly connected to each other. Okay? So, these are the differences. Now, the next structure what uh, the gram negative cell wall has is outer membrane. So, outer membrane of gram negative cell wall, it contains various proteins like uh, one of the protein is called as Brown's uh, lipoprotein. This is a lipoprotein which is uh, connected from outer membrane to the peptidoglycan layer. It has another protein which is called as outer membrane protein. Three uh, number of outer membrane uh, uh, proteins are tighten to each other to form a pore like structure. So, this kind of outer membrane uh, uh, protein will help in transport of molecules, transport of various uh, uh, molecules across the cell wall. Okay, they form pores. This kind of pores are formed by three molecules of proteins. They are joined to each other to form a pore like structure in the outer membrane. Okay. So, next to outer membrane another uh, structure is there which is in the gram negative cell wall which is uh, which is typically absent in gram positive cell wall which is called as lipopolysaccharide. The lipopolysaccharide has got three component lipid A, core polysaccharide and O specific side chains. The uh, uh, lipid A is the first layer of a uh, lipopolysaccharide which is uh, present adjacent to the outer membrane. It has been connected to the outer membrane and lipid A is usually it is the bacterial endotoxin. You know that 
a uh, bacterial uh, the gram negative bacteria will have endotoxin in the cell wall endotoxin is nothing but it is the lipid a part of the uh, lipopolysaccharide endotoxin it is responsible for virulence of gram negative uh, bacteria it induces inflammation inside the body and it it stimulates the immune response of the human body so next to lipopolysaccharide the next uh, part of lps is core polysaccharide this core polysaccharide is uh, nothing but it is composed of 10 to 12 sugar moieties and from the core polysaccharide the o specific side chains emerge the o specific side chains they contain several molecules of sugars which may vary from organism to organism so the gram negative organisms they vary in their lps uh, because of the o specific side chains they are also called as somatic antigen or o antigen the o specific side chains it is antigenic in nature and various gram negative organisms the composition of o specific r side chains are different so when they stimulate the uh, immune response the antibodies which are produced they will be against the specific o antigen of the a particular gram negative organism so which can be used for diagnosis of gram negative organism infections okay so this is about a lps of a gram negative uh, bacteria uh, so next we will discuss the differences between gram positive and gram negative uh, cell wall uh, let us uh, summarize we have already discussed in gram positive cell wall at third position of the tetrapeptide side chain the amino acid which was uh, present is lysine whereas in gram negative uh, cell wall we have diamino pimetic acid okay diamino pimetic acid pentaglycine bridge is uh, typically present in gram positive cell wall it connects the two tetrapeptide side chains whereas in gram negative cell wall the pentaglycine bridge is absent the two tetrapeptides side chains are directly linked to each other lipid content is usually high in gram negative uh, cell wall because they have lipid a they have the o specific side chain so all these uh, are together uh, are called as lipopolysaccharide so lipopolysaccharide is present in gram negative cell wall which is usually absent in gram uh, positive cell wall a lipid content is very low in gram uh, positive cell wall tachoic acid is a component of gram positive cell wall which is typically absent in gram negative cell wall and of course the amino acids uh, which are present are highly variable in gram negative cell wall whereas the variety of amino acid in gram positive cell wall are few aromatic amino acids are typically absent in gram positive cell wall whereas they are usually uh, present in gram negative cell wall so kindly remember the differences between gram positive and gram negative cell wall because it is very important in the exam next part of the bacterial cell is bacterial cell membrane so bacterial cell membrane it lies internal to the cell wall it is basically it is a phospholipid bilayered phospholipid the difference uh, between the cell membrane of bacteria to the cell membrane of the eukaryote is the bacterial cell membrane they do not contain sterols of course there are some exceptions like mycoplasma mycoplasma is the only bacteria which contains sterol in the cell membrane otherwise usually the bacterial cell membrane do not contain sterol instead of that they have certain additional uh, things like they have a integral uh, protein okay they have hopanoids they have a, a peripheral protein 
and they also have uh, the carbohydrates which are either glycolipid uh, carbohydrates or or the oligosaccharide uh, carbohydrates so these are the additional structures which are present in the cell membrane of bacteria so let us discuss function of uh, bacterial cell membrane the cell membrane of the bacteria they act as fluid mosaic model like the eukaryotic cell membrane okay so they perform various uh, function like transport of nutrients or waste excretion through the cell membrane it usually occurs through the help of the various enzymes and proteins present in the periplasmic space okay apart from that the cell membrane also performs various metabolic activities like it provides site for bacterial respiration please uh, uh, remember cell membrane has certain invaginations which are called as mesosomes and mesosomes helps in bacterial uh, respiration okay uh, apart from that cell membrane also provides the site for various lipid synthesis and bacterial chromosomal segregation also occurs through the cell membrane the cell membrane helps in bacterial uh, chromosomal segregation during the replication of the organism okay so these are the various function of the cell membrane uh, let us now discuss about the cytoplasmic uh, ma uh, matrix so inside the cell membrane the cytoplasm and its constituents they are together called as cytoplasmic matrix okay it can be divided into cytoplasm and its organelles and the nuclear uh, material which is described as nucleoid the cytoplasm uh, contains various structure you know that prokaryotic cytoplasm do not have any organelles they have the only organelle what they have is ribosome okay apart from that other structures what the cytoplasm can have is mesosome which is the organ of uh, respiration for bacteria and it also contain various granules various storage granules which are called as inclusions okay so a uh, ribosome as i have discussed earlier in prokaryote the ribosome is of a uh, 70s type and ribosome is usually uh, associated with the mrna and it helps in protein synthesis next is mesosome and intracytoplasmic inclusions so intracytoplasmic inclusions they are the energy house of the organism energy or the storage granules of the organism okay so they are either of two type inorganic and organic organic inclusions the classical examples are glycogen inclusions and poly hydroxyl butyrate these are the two classical example of organic inclusions whereas inorganic inclusion are the volutin granules which are characteristically found in corynebacterium diphtheri these are also called as metachromatic granules okay these are also called as metachromatic granules so now we will discuss about about the mesosomes so uh, mesosomes are the invagination of the bacterial cell membrane either in the form of vesicle or in the form of tubules 
or in the form of lamellae. So they perform respiration for bacteria. As you know that bacteria do not have mitochondria. The respiration organelle in, in bacteria is the mesosomes. Now we will discuss about the nucleoid of the bacteria. Bacterial nucleoid differs a lot from the nucleus of eukaryotes. Uh, that is there is no nuclear membrane. They do not have nucleus, a nucleolus. Neither they have nucleoproteins. Okay. And the DNA, what they have is diffuse, double standard DNA, circular, and they have only one number of chromosome. In contrast, eukaryotic, which will have diploid chromosome, prokaryote will have usually haploid chromosome, only one number of a uh, chromosome. Of course, you have exception here, Vibrio cholera is the only bacteria which has two chromosomes okay then bacteria divide by binary fission bacteria divide by binary fission uh, bacteria may have extra chromosomal dna material Other than nucleus, a bacteria may have extra chromosomal DNA uh, uh, material inside a structure which is called as plasmid. Plasmid we will discuss in detail in the chapter of bacterial genetics. So uh, this is about the nucleoid of the, of the bacteria. Now we will discuss about the various cell wall appendages. The various cell wall appendages are capsule, flagella, fimbria or phyllae and bacterial spore. So let us discuss about the capsule, capsule and the slime layer, they are usually present external to the bacterial uh, cell wall. They are the layer of amorphous, viscid uh, material, which is usually called as glycocalyx. If the amorphous uh, viscid uh, material is well organized, difficult to remove then it is called as capsule if it is loosely organized easy to remove then it is called as the slime layer okay if it is loosely organized it is slime layer it is well organized well defined then it is called as capsule there is a third variety which is called as biofilm which we will discuss a bit later so there is an organism called as streptococcus salivarius which usually contains both capsule and slime layer so this is mcq what they usually ask which organism has both capsule and slime layer streptococcus salivarius okay so next we will discuss uh, what are the various examples of capsulated organism capsulated organisms usually the capsule is composed of polysaccharide various uh, bacterial agents are there which contain a polysaccharide uh, capsule like pneumococcus meningococcus Hemophilus influenza, Clepsilla pneumoniae. All these organisms they have a polysaccharide capsule. Capsule can be composed of hyaluronic acid. The classical example is Streptococcus. Streptococcus, the capsule has been composed of hyaluronic acid. Okay. Capsule can also be composed of polypeptide, 
the classical example is bacillus anthracis which is the causative agent of anthrax so these are the list of capsulated bacteria there is a fungus also which is capsulated that is cryptococcus pneumoformis cryptococcus pneumoformis is a yeast which is also uh, capsulated and it has a polysaccharide capsule okay it has a polysaccharide capsule